Hello, everybody out there with type 1 diabetes. Today, I have a message for those of you that are on shots. Um, if you are on a pump, you can watch this video too. You might like it. I don't know. <laughs> this is Dr. Jody. Uh, perhaps you're just finding me today, or perhaps you've been following me since I started doing these Facebook Lives back in March when the whole lockdown world began. Uh, I have had type 1 diabetes for 40 years. Where's my dex? And I have dedicated my career to helping people like you, people that are struggling with type 1 diabetes. My passion is helping people get off the blood sugar roller coaster, have less lows, less highs, and confidently live a healthy, vibrant life with type 1. Let's see how my DEX is doing today. Pretty good. I think I'm doing pretty good. I did go a little bit high after breakfast because I dosed too late for my breakfast. So I'm going to go back. My, my night last night was really wonderfully flat. Um, that's my last about 24 hours. So this is what's possible when you get the right education and support. I'm passionate about giving the right education and support to you because the majority of type ones that I've talked to in my virtual practice for almost 10 years now, most of us don't have to, and we're still not getting the numbers that we want, right? Well, that is probably because you haven't received the proper education. So if you're on shots, uh, let me know, leave a comment below if you're on shots. And what I want you to know is that if you're on Lantus or Levomir, you should really be taking this twice a day. It is not a 24 hour insulin. Neither one is 24 hour insulin. I have so many patients that are on Lantus once a day and if they take it in the morning, they're always going high in the middle of the night because their Lantus wears out. If they take it in the evening, then they're always going high in the afternoon because their Lantus is wearing out. So if you're on Lantus or Levomir, you really need to be taking it exactly 12 hours apart, twice a day. That's for most people. That's what I would recommend. So don't make any changes from watching this video without talking to your doctor. But if you are on it once a day, you probably are going high for about four or five hours in the hours leading up to the time that you gave your shot, okay? Now, the newest long-acting insulin, I recommend you looking into seeing if you can get, and that's Traceba. Not only is it definitely once a day, because it lasts 24 hours, but it's it's flat. Although Lantus and Levomir are called flat long actings, they actually aren't totally flat. But Traceba, all my patients have been getting really good results with Traceba. So that is my message for you today. Make sure your background insulin is covering you over the 24 hours right? You even have a risk of going into DKA if you don't have any insulin on board for a period of time, right? Maybe you haven't been dosing your rapid in that period that your Lantus or Levomir runs out. You actually are risking at DKA because the reason why DKA occurs is not enough insulin in the body. Just because you're high doesn't mean you're having DKA. We've all had plenty of high blood sugar levels and we weren't going into DKA. The difference is if you are without insulin in your body. So for example, if you didn't take any rapid for a day and you only took one unit of Lan or one dose of Lantus or Levomir a day, in that window where it runs out, you would be at risk of DKA because you wouldn't have insulin in your body. So we need insulin in our body 24 hours a day, um, mostly to counteract the glucose that the liver feeds us, right? The glucose feed, the liver feeds us glucose all day long. So to counteract that, we need this long, steady insulin that stays in our system for 24 hours, right? Our mealtime insulin doesn't stay for 24 hours because it's only supposed to interact with the glucose that we are eating from the meal, right? We don't, we can't do, I mean, worst case scenario, like when I traveled once, I think I was without long acting for a day. I can't remember if the bottle got too hot or if the bottle broke or something like that. And so what I did was I did some uh, rapid shot. I did a little rapid shot every two to four hours all day long because I needed to keep sure, because since that rapid only lasts, you know, up to around four, it can last longer, depends on a lot of factors, but we're gonna just say it lasts four hours, right? So in a sense, I would need a little bit of shot every four hours to keep that insulin going. So. Um, it's really important to understand this concept that we need this background insulin. It's never supposed to be to dose what we're eating, right? Long acting insulin only has to do with your body's needs, mainly from the amount of glucose that your liver puts out. So we got to get that long acting set correctly where you can stay flat, like a right, a correct long acting insulin dose. If you were not to eat all day long and not to bolus rapid, 
would keep you 80 to 100, 80 to 110 all day long. If your dose is correct, that's the goal. Now, diabetes isn't perfect, and we all know there's different levels of stress hormones and other hormones every day, so our numbers can kind of fluctuate. But a long-acting insulin shouldn't make you go low. It shouldn't make you go high. If you go to bed at 110 without food digesting or rapid from your dinner working, if you go to bed at 110, you should wake up at 110, right? That is why my number is so flat. I am on shots. So I do two shots of Levamir a day. And I was pretty much a flat 90 all night long. This was dinner and this was breakfast. So that is when I slept. And so that is what a perfectly dosed long acting, or for you on pumps, right? You gotta get your basal rate right. Sometimes I went to bed at 180 and I, wake, I woke up at 100, so that's perfect. And I'll be like, no, that's not perfect. Your basal rate is not meant to drop you, right? Because if your basal rate drops you 80 points on a regular basis, what happens if you go to bed at 80? <laughs> that's not right, that's not good. So getting this background insulin set correctly is really important. If it's, if it's Lancer's or Levamir, it needs to be twice a day. If you're on Traceba, it can be once a day. If you're on a basal rate, uh, you need to make sure, well, on, no matter what you're doing, you need to make sure that it keeps you flat in the absence of food and the absence of rapid bolus, right? It keeps you flat. So of course, there's no long-acting insulin at pump. Sometimes people are confused and they say, well, should I put long-acting insulin at pump? And I say, no because the drip rate of the rapid in the pump mimics, that drips in you 24 hours a day, that mimics the long acting where you do it once and then it lasts for you know 20 or whatever many hours, depending on which one you have. So if you want to help, you have help with all of this, I know it's a lot, I feel like I just gave you tons of info today. <laughs> I have a course, a very simple course, it's called How to Get Off the Blood Sugar Roller Coaster. And I love it. People that take this, they're like, oh my gosh, I learned so much in this. I can't believe I didn't know X, Y, Z, and I've had diabetes for a, a year or 50 years, truly. So it's on my website, drjodynd.com. If you want to get help with getting your basal rate or your long acting set correctly, this course will help you. So it's called How to Get Off the Blood Sugar Roller Coaster. It's at drjodynd.com. Thanks for watching. I have been coming live to you since our lockdown world started back in March. This is, I think, my 70th Facebook Live. I come live on my page right around 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Eastern. I'd love to hear from you, what you like about this video, what you want to learn, what you're struggling with, all of that. So have a great day. Here's to living a healthy and happy life with type 1 diabetes. It's possible. I've had it for 40 years. You can too. Okay. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.